Another day, another dollar, Mr. Marsh. Or at least that's about what we'll be earning. Yeah. Don't know how it worked out that way, but uh, that's making us five p. And I can't believe how warm it is for the end of October. It's not it bad is. at all, is it? At all. Still in my t-shirt here. Uh, we've got something interesting to do today, Marshall. We have a fault. People like to see faults. And it, it's uh, one where we're going to have to, well, I don't quite know what it is, but we're going to have to get our hands well and truly gripping the juicy plumpness of a false buttocks on this one. So uh, yeah, that could be interesting. Or not. And if it's not, we won't film it, so you won't see this. Or something. But uh, time is a ticking and we better get the hell away. Let's roll! Let's go! Hey! Hey! Wait for me! Oh, not so much of a rush after all, Mr. Marsh, because we're 15 mm -hmm. minutes early, so uh, we've got time for a cup of coffee. All right. But uh, it's Three Fault Friday, Mr. Marsh. Are you up for three a, th faults. a three fault finger blasting today? <laughs> we've got three trip faults to sort out. Don't know if they're MCBs, don't know if they're RCDs. Um, I don't know the nature of them at all. And they've had flooding following heavy rain. So right. I think it's, it's going to be a consumer unit in the basement. I've only been to this site, it was years ago, can't remember anything about it. And this, this was reported at the weekend, last weekend. Of course it's Friday, because it's Three Fault Friday. So uh, by now, there is a chance that these things may have dried up and the trip problem gone away if it's yeah, water related. So this could all be a hiding to nothing. So, we may find Three Faults. We may be hopelessly inadequate in finding these faults, or we may find that they're just too complicated for our lame brains. Yes. Right. But also, we have with us, to aid in our fault finding efforts, <laughs> the Metrail MI3152, <laughs> which uh, isn't ours, <laughs> but we borrowed it to play with it. In fact, um, Matrell themselves uh, own that. They do. And they that, do. that's one that they they lend out for people to evaluate. I guess. Well, it's in very good condition for a loaner. We must be the first. It is. On you went and dropped list. it into some fucking flood water that one today. <laughs> And it back all covered in mud. There you go, lads. Thanks for the let, letting us play with the 3152. I suppose we better uh, trundle off to town. The first job is at a Victorian townhouse, so parking's going to be a nightmare. Uh, and this is the one where the basement apparently flooded. So uh, we'll see what's tripping off and, uh, and what we can do about it. No, we've seen these Victorian. Uh townhouses, big houses, before around Leamington, and normally the electrics are put high enough up that the flooding doesn't affect them, because we've been in a few flooded basements oh, yeah. where really nothing's been touched by the, the actual well, flooding. How flooded could it be? I mean, it hasn't. When was the last time it rained heavily? Well, yesterday, was it? We were at, no, we were at yeah. Sam's job Last the day days. before, oh, yeah, and we had the rains. mini tornado. Mm. Fly by. Almost <sighs> blew Dave's hat off. I did, except I was sat inside on my ass, <laughs> as usual. Right, to job number one. Oh, this isn't as expected, is it, Marshall? No, no, no. Expecting a flooded basement, but it's actually a furnished basement. Apparently, this drainage pipe had some kind of issue following roofing work and a load of heavy rainwater came gushing down the outside lights and gushing down the inside walls where we have That's some floor. Mm. What have we got here? We got a, this is a series of flats, isn't it? So we got a three phase head there, separately metered of course. One smart meter, two dumb digital meters and one analog meter. Old time clock, some contactors, a couple of switch fuses for the, well, three switch fuses, there must be three flats here of course. And then you've got your communal box up there. Now the first fault is that this socket down here and the outside light doesn't work. I reckon that fused RCD up there is tripped. That looks tripped to me. 
presume this is for like cleaners socket or something like that. It's a nice yeah, display, it is, isn't it? That's a nice yeah, display. Yeah. Single test, touchscreen display there. We're going for, what are we going for? Uh, in fact, you know what? This is different to my Metro, because my Metro, whatever screen you're on, it shows you what voltage you see in there, but this one, like the TIS, doesn't. Uh, we're going to be fat zero, of course. We've got nothing between live neutral, nothing between live earth. So indeed, that socket's not working. The outside light's probably not working. We haven't done any testing on this yet. We need to IR test this, but this is tripped off. I can see that up here. Oh. Either it balked or it just won't trip back on. It won't sit back on. It doesn't feel like it's trying to go back on. That feels like this thing is balked. Um, blew its ass out. Maybe. What's that MCB that's... Oh, hang on, no, this is off here. Can you socket? There you go, it needs the power to latch itself. No, that's still doing nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah, fair enough. But what's that socket doing now? Have you seen the voltage on it yet? No, 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 we are. Oh, no, we are, we are. If I look down in the little corner, I think it's a little corner, yes. Oh, yeah. There you go. I need to figure out what this is doing. Obviously, that's going to a wall light. That seems to be going into this fuse box, that white cable, and then we've got a twin and earth. Where's that going? Oh, it's going to this light here, look. Yeah. Where's that coming from? Is that That's coming from here. Junk. So that communal socket comes off a 15 amp breaker here, and this RCD controlled in the lighting comes off the 5 amp breaker here. I've got a loop on the socket. It's clipped direct to the cable. What do, what do you reckon? Five meters between there and there. Five, five, no, six. It's hard to say because it's going around. But it's it's between five split and Split the difference. Meters. Five and a half. And use my Cosmo communicator. So we know that's table I one in the on site guide, Nigel. A 2515 cable has a resistance of 741 milli ohms. Uh, divide that by 5.5 meters, which we think is the circuit length, and we should be seeing something around the 0.13 mark, yeah, 0.14 mark. Yeah. Let's find out if we're hot or not. If Nigel presses the go button on the trail, and my 3125. Hmm. Oh. 0.12, 0.12. What did we say? 0.13. Okay, four. it's probably a bit less than 5.5 meters, but the number is good, at least in terms of earth fault loop impedance. Therefore, insulation resistance is the next thing that we want to check. We know that this simply serves one socket, so now if we can put the clips on the end of the Metrel MI3125, I'll take that up here and take it away, David. Your multiple personalities kicking. Do hurry up, you tedious little man. Oh, I yeah, I need a wee too. That coffee goes right through you, doesn't it? Uh, right, so we want ISO for insulation resistance. Line to neutral, no problem doing line to neutral here, it only goes to one socket. And you know what, I'm sure it's going to be just fine, Nigel. Full scale deflection of 999 mega ohms on this beast, and sure enough, we meet and greet that number. Let's stick it on Earth. Line Earth. Should have charged the battery on this friggin' thing. I'll have to plug it in somewhere once we've got some power on. Beautiful. Neutral Earth. So if this passes, we ought to be able to. Recommission that circuit, get a live impedance number out of it, and we've got no worries re energizing that particular beast. My glamorous assistant here with his gnome hat on. Gnome hat? Huh? You're not you need to be standing there with a fishing rod in your hand. Right, where are we? Oh, start by plugging that in. Well done, Nigel. Single tests. Loop. Oh, yes. 
Uh, it's not on an RCD, so Z loop. We should see, yes indeed, uh, we have voltage 245 between line neutral, 245 between line earth. Uh, this particular tester at the moment is set up to test a 6 amp type B breaker. So when it comes up with a pass fail result, it will be based on that. Obviously this isn't a 6 amp type B, this is a 15 amp 3871. Yeah, we're not interested in that, we're interested in the but number. We know, yeah, we know what number we're expecting to see, don't we, we'll roughly okay. give it a go. What have we measured before? 0.12 plus whatever the external impedance is, which we haven't measured, but 0.3. I can live with that. Oh. It just means our external impedance is probably about 0.16 or 0.17, something like that. Beauty. Okay. So that we can recommission. The lights we need to IR test and probably change that RCD. Let's do it. So this RCD fused spur or fuse unit has obviously been put in for the outside lights at some stage. Perhaps the outside lights uh, are newer, I don't know, but obviously they're must have been the requirement to actually protect them at the time they went in. Or someone, someone figured it was a good idea anyway. So, if water got in outside and those lights are faulty, we should see a duff number when I are testing it. And I've got line and neutral connected together. And we're testing to earth. Right, mind your way. You are in the way. Uh, ISO, ISO, and go. No, it says it's okay. So if water did get in out there, I guess it's dried out since. So it looks to me like it's just, I suspect water got in there, blew the bollocks off this thing because it just won't reset anymore. Which I've seen before on these, they're all right what they do, but sometimes it seems that they're, they're fairly easy to blow up. It's got a 2012 manufacture date on it, so it's obviously been there for a while. Um, fortunately, we're out of the replacement, so let's get that changed out now, shall we? Amazing how many of these friggin' 3036 boxes are still out there, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. I reckon that break is a little bit trippy there because that just clocked off look. Yeah, it's tested fine. Yeah, look at that. Uh, See how sensitive that is. Did you touch it a minute ago just to well, it, it, while you were doing it all? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't take much of a knock, does it? So uh, yeah, it might be worth suggesting a replacement there. Bit too much spring to the thing. Right, um, I mean it's not even powered on so it's not like it's tripping off because of any kind of... Yeah. We're going out now, look. It's in a sense of, let's power up, we know the socket's okay, we've tested the light, we didn't film testing the R1R2 of the light, did we, the earth hot loop part? No. Never mind. Yeah, it's all tested and working, it all comes out okay. Uh, so I think the fault with the light was water did get into it, blew the arse all out of this thing, we replaced it with another one. Uh, on. That's tripping all right by the test button, which this one wasn't. And yeah, exterior light on, interior light on, which is what that controls. So, so far so good. We found that this is faulty. The flip water that had caused trouble out here is gone, dried up, no longer a problem but the next problem is downstairs in the basement. So let's mosey on down there because that's where the real meat of this one lies. Ready for your meat to Nigel? <laughs> yeah, that needs to replace. Yeah. Seeing as it's a bit uh, sensitive, like a good South Nigel. We'll, uh, we'll change this out. The only one I've got on the band there is a 20 amp. That'd be alright, wouldn't it? Single socket, clip direct, 2.5. It's not going to tickle the bollocks of a 20 amp, is it? 
wonder why you were taking the front tough. Yes, yeah, so if I had another 16, I could have just done a straight swap out. But because the back plane's different, yeah. people don't know. So you can't stick a 20 into a 16 hole, for example. You can see the pins are, don't line up on these things. And although they look a little cranky, you can still buy these. This is a 60898 Type B. Make sure that nasty one doesn't get mixed up in your collection. Oh, well, I don't keep these on the van really. Uh, I've got a box of them back at base. <coughs> oh, yeah. But um, I don't keep them as stock items. You see how sensitive that is. So it's tripping off, isn't it, to do with power? It just, just takes a, just a little touch. Ooh, a little touch and it flicks itself off. Ooh. And that's that. I just had a wee and Nigel was out there peeking at my winky. What do you think about that, viewers? I couldn't. Not right, is it? I couldn't see it from that point. <laughs> Maybe with those goggles on. <laughs> right, we are in the basement. We were expecting a bit of a dank, dark, flood ridden basement. Carpets are missing because obviously the flood water came down here and ruined everything. But no, this is a, um, a normal, well, a, uh, a furnished basement, yes. With no lights. Because what the lady of the house says is that water was pouring out of these light fixtures. We're directly, we're directly underneath where we just were, aren't we, at the entrance yes. of the house. Water was pouring through these fixtures into the bath, which was quite handy in terms of where it was going. However, if the light breaker is turned on now, we get a bit of a bang. Uh, let's go and have a look at the board and what we'll do is if I get you to turn on the breaker I'll come down here with the camera and see if I can get some banging action. Okay. What have we here? We have the usual radio for in the kitchen when you're listening to it. <laughs> Seems to be a very oh, close thing. Quite, yeah. Oh, this is an old boy, isn't it? 16th edition, no RCD protection. So early 16th edition, perhaps, or an earlier, probably predating 2000. Someone shoehorned in an MCG breaker. I always find it a bit weird when you see something like that, one because MK is so easy to get hold of. Yeah. Why would you stick in a breaker of a completely different make? Obviously, this is our circuit. Not a lot labelled here, is there? Obviously, no testing and inspections happened here for some time by the looks of it. Could all do with being updated, refreshed. But we have here a breaker which, if we put it on, there's lights on the on position downstairs, do you know? Yes, they are. Oh, well, that went pretty much straight away with a bit of a flash as well. I don't know if that caught on camera, but. Watch closely now. Yes, hmm. Maybe you just blew the cable apart. There was obviously a bit of a surge when I turned it on just then. Oh, there you go, we fixed it, Nigel. As long as there isn't a fire downstairs, right? <laughs> Well, you know what they say about a watched breaker. A watched breaker never trips. <sighs> but we have seen that trip today, haven't we? I'm going to go downstairs and have a look at what those lights are doing. Number five, breaker five. Hmm. Always the way. And when it went earlier, Nide reported he thought it sounded like it was coming from the back of this light. So we are going to take that light down 
just see if we can see any kind of waterlogged junctionette behind it. But it's annoying that it's not tripping now. I'll turn off number five, Nige. There has been an overload fault, which means either a short line neutral or a short line earth. We can certainly do some IR testing to see if it's to line earth. Single test ISO. So join line neutral together, test them with respect to earth. Drops out at 5 volts. Good. Surprised that didn't pop again earlier when that was on then. In fact, have we got a resistive short here? Let's, just, um, let's go into resistance. No. So it's not a resistive short. It's not like a line is touching Earth. It's a short with a... Um, Failure of insulation resistance. So, suggesting possibly water? Water between live parts and earth parts, yes. You're going to test Hopefully. the line neutral or not because there's loads on it. Uh, the only thing I no, I, I can't because, uh, as you say, there's a bunch of down lights all connected line to neutral. But we can assume that our fault is this one, line to earth, because obviously oh, yeah. we shouldn't be seeing. Number that low, and how low do you go? Oh, so if we can take a look at those lights, and it depends on how accessible it is. I mean, if we can't get to the, the wet bits, the ceiling needs to come down really. But you know that may all be on the insurance. I don't know. But um, all we can do is try and find the wet bit. The reason why there's a big fat zero there. Right. What are we seeing? Well, I took the uh, bezel out. There's no earths connected here. Uh, it's one of those where they've chopped the bloody CPCs yeah, off. Yeah. Fucking bathroom fitters. Um, can't. Oh, that's connected directly to that one, I'd say. There's no, no junction. No, there, but I can't pull this one. I can't feel enough, but it was popping above here when it popped. Uh, you heard it pop up there, did you? Yes, it was definitely, you know, they're kind of difficult to get a direction, but it felt this side. Do we need to get the inspection camera? So, yeah, I think we're going to need this screw on. It's rusty, so it's been moist. Right, we'll go back to that. There's no the feel of particular wetness here. Don't feel any, you know, you can tell what it is. Right, well, uh, I'll go and get the camera and we'll see what we can see. Um, it actually doesn't look wet. Well, it's had a couple of weeks to dry out, hasn't it? Yeah. And it's hot down here. Yeah. So, yeah, inspection camera. I've got my um, ferret cam in the toolbox, but it's not charged, and I haven't installed the app on my phone yet. I'm not seeing any junction boxes or anything. We've got cables around pipe work going off over there. seen anything to be honest. The trouble is the quality of workmanship as usual is that of a fitter handyman bullshit. Cord grip's supposed to be there, no cord grip. This was never made for twin and earth because it's made by morons. So I'm looking here, this screw is rusty as you, as you observed tonight your many water got into here. No nicks, no wetness. No, it's dry. It's not busted. I'll just put that back there for the moment. And again, I do not understand why builders, fitters, chop off the CPC. I mean, what the fuck's that all about? Join them together. I mean, there's a chop there's a there for, it. for it. It's like, oh, well, we don't need that. I don't know why the manufacturer put that bit of copper in the middle of the cable. Maybe it's just to help me strip it or something. I'm just pull on that to strip the cable down. It's fucking moronic. Annoying because we're not seeing anything here. Shall we? Uh, Let's have another one down, shall we? Oh, 
is that happening? Hello. Fingers. Oh, junction box. Oh, okay, box. Okay. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? It's an eye jump. You back off a bit. Yeah. Someone's obviously been here at some stage more recently and put this in. What have we got here? That is the junction that goes with this stupid cheap down light, this non fire rated piece of shit hardware store down light. 12 volts. This has been converted to GU10 operation. And probably fairly recently, if this Wago box is here. Looks neat enough in there again. Well, it's waiting, not, not water logs or anything. Oops. No, it looks okay. We can effectively disconnect the sections of lighting in here to see if, in fact, let's do that. Let's see if our IR number. This is a small room to do. This is the feed in, isn't it? Because that's going to that down light. That's going to that down light, yeah. So if we were to disconnect that and then test one of the others. I'll just take out line and neutral. I'll leave the CPC in, there we go. Now we can do our IR test again at the board. If it still says a big fat zero, then that's a fault elsewhere on the wiring. Okay, let's go see. IR test, cut to line neutral together. We're going to test with respect to oith. Well, that's interesting. I don't know why that comes up. It's got a glare all on it. All I can there. see is a reflection of the lens. Uh, this tester, you've got shit all over the lens. <laughs> this tester actually gives you a warning if it detects a resistive load. If we were to go to continuity, and do a test. It says there's, oh, it says there is a resistive load. Mm -hmm. ah. So this tester actually warns you if it detects a resistive load below 50 kilo ohms. So we have resistance between line earth here. What's that one on? That's line earth. If I power on then, we'll see if anything complains. Power's on. Lights are on. The fact you haven't been doing the power and the lights are on, you know? What, what's on? The bathroom light. Oh, there's still a bathroom light working? Yeah. I'll put that one in the corner. Which one? Uh, that was on? Yeah. Right, well, it's, uh, it's a bit dark in here. Should I turn the lights on? If you would, please, Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite cool, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> there you go. But this one was on, so that means that that's not the incoming power. This new, maybe this other one. So if, if no, it looks like it's that one. Maybe there's another junction attached to. I don't know. Well, that means that we're missing something. The power in. Look down here and. Uh, Looks a lordy. I mind about bathroom fitters, yeah. Here's all this down the middle. There's a junction box behind this light switch. That's worth a closer look. Is it a good and well wired one? I doubt it. Absolutely bastardised. Transformer in here as well. <laughs> just, the more you pull, the more you see. What have they done here? This is. I don't know what this is doing. Maybe it was for the old lights, they were 12 volt, you were saying. 
these are 12 volt fittings. Yeah, but. But the transformer's still here. You've got 230 volts of those lights because they're GU10. The transformer's warm. So that's going off. Ah, I know, it's doing these. These are 12 volt, these ones in here. That's what that's doing. Right, okay. It's a bit of a red herring then. Our best guess at this point, we know that light goes to there, we know that light goes to there, and then both of these are fed from a common point somewhere else. Which experience says Yes. This used to have a central light point. Mm -hmm. And then they converted and, it to down lights. And if we do this on the ceiling, we can see a repair scarring where it's been badly filled in the middle. I don't know if they can see that on camera. But yeah, I think I'm getting it. But it's just like a big blob of it. Mm. So, what do you suggest we do? Well, I think you know what we're going to do, Mr. I know exactly what we're going to do. Uh, I think we're going to drill a hole in the ceiling, stick our inspection camera up and see if we can see any sign of a junction point. And hopefully, that junction point is where our fault is. I think we're going to find it, just so we'll start with the evidence. Yeah. Well, confidence for a Friday. Let's see. Uh, we'll start with the 20mm hole just big enough to get that camera through. And if we need to unwiden it, we'll unwiden it. I think it's probably plaster, it is plasterboard, isn't it? Not often plaster, so it ought to be straightforward enough. Mr. Marsh, would you like to take control of the drillage? Oh, there's a picture of my wife over there. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're in the picture as well, Nigel. And the hold, hold your bucket. Thank you. All right, let's have the bucket under the drill. Okay. Uh, Oh, oh, it's clicked in. Oh, God. Oh, put it in. Up and over. And there is absolutely nothing to see. Uh, absolutely nothing. What? Are you next to another joist or anything? Yeah. Do you want to stick one on the other side? We're right on a joist there. Right. So if we stick one on the other side. And we're up to all. I was just saying, you can't trust Nigel to do anything, and he's drilled the hole in the wrong place. Uh, I think, yes, uh, it's a 50 50 call, that really, isn't it? Yeah. The centre of the room. If there was a light point there originally, it would have been next to a joist. Oh, yeah. And we just need it. To get to one side or to the other. Second time lucky. Come on, come on. Nothing. Oh, try that now. I can't even see any cables passing that way, but that I, I can see. It that way. Oh, for fuck's sake. I hate Fridays. Fuck you over Friday. There is cabling over there. Uh. I've got a cable here, look. Can you see that? I can only vaguely see. <laughs> Alright, don't mess it up just so I can see it. Lost it. They're going down. There's something there that looks like it's surrounded by weirdness. I don't know they're going. There's cabling there. Where's it going? Right, I'm going to do a little bit of fishing around here. We put a couple more holes in the wall. Can you see that? See them rather. But we've got something of interest. Mm -hmm. We've got a junction box. See the cables going into that junction box? Yeah, right there. I 
Okay. Put it on this white thing here. Yeah. That. Yeah, black thing. I believe if my camera is fucking around, that's in there. Some asshole. Oh, but I just shut that. So. Some asshole has shoved a junction box. Yeah. In, in the, the wall. wall. Now that may not be where our fault is. But obviously that's our point of interest. It definitely is. Especially if there was water flowing down that way. Yes. So we're going to have to open up this wall here. Just the top here. About there. Yeah. Yeah. Now she blows. In the moronic place to get a JB. Now then. Well, that's got a lot in it, hasn't it? It has, hasn't it? It's a well loaded JB. Oh, there's lots of stuff spiraling off there. Don't let that lid drop down. Is there any water in it? No, it looks dry. That's true. No CPCs in there. I'll Jesus do. Christ. They're all chopped off. Oh my god, this is the fault from hell. This just keeps on giving, doesn't it? It does. Don't you hate We're looking for ones? a fucking fault to earth on wiring where there's no fucking CPCs anyway. Yep. On something that's been flooded where everything is bone bloody dry. That's a feed in, feed out, and. Well, there must be two feet out, so I don't know. I wonder if one goes to that fan. There's a fan over here, isn't there, which also seems to be bone bloody dry. What we have here is a feed in by neutral CPC, we have determined. CPC cut off by whichever wanker thought it was a great idea to stick this junction box in a fucking wall. Uh, we know the bedroom is still live with this disconnected. The rest of this wiring, this is your switch return and then you've got two feeds out to feed these down lights. So the whole thing about saying, yes, it's the down lights that are causing it to go bang because we saw water pouring out of them, red herring, it's not actually the down lights at fault. Uh, the down light wiring is shite, of course, but not the reason for the trip event. What we have determined is that the trip is happening at the fan. There's no separate fan isolator. There ought to be a fused fan isolator for this. There's no separate fan isolator. Again, it's all bathroom fitter shite. The only way I've determined it's the fan is because we left that disconnected to eliminate this room from our inquiries. The Metrol still reported that there was a short to earth. So I got an to turn it on while I was in here and I saw a flash from this corner and this is where the, the sound was coming from as well. In fact, we should demonstrate that on camera because what I'd do, Nigel, if you want to film that corner, I'll put the power back on and you'll hopefully see something go bang. There you go. I take it you saw some fireworks. Right. What did you see? It's all around. It flashed all around. You got a circle of flash. Did, did the whole hole light up? They're all around the edge. So you got a, a flash of circle. So can we get that liner out and see what's in there? No, that's fucking cemented in. Uh, and again, this is Barry the fucking bullshit bathroom fitter, isn't it? He must have... A junction down there. A junction down there. Either that or the cable has uh, degraded to such a point where it's yeah. just short circuit. And the homeowner did say she's going to revamp this bathroom and fucking good, because it's just a disgrace. Tell you what, I'm going to smash out part of that liner. And if you look on the screen now, what have we got here, Nige? It looks like it's, it looks like the nails right by it. Look at the state of it there. That's probably been damp for years, isn't it? Yeah. Fucking shoddy as fuck. I wonder. <clears throat> Rotten. Press if we restore <coughs> power and uh, see if we can pick up from here what goes bang. You have to 
Go and switch on number five. Okay. Whoa. Now we're going to try and hook that cable and get it away from the damp wall because we think that the insulation is compromised. Hence the bang, hence the crap IR reading. And there is a rusty nail. There's a, a rusty nail around it, yes, as well. So if we pull it away from contact with those elements, we may well see that IR reading increase. Of course, the cable's still fucked. The insulation of it is knackered. But it'll be interesting to see whether or not It makes a difference just physically moving it. If I can get down there to do so. Got it. Right, now that we're off the nail, yeah? Let's push but go on that tester again. I'm still saying there's a fucking, I knew it would do that. Just piss me off. Just because it's fucking Friday. But. Is it a way? Oh, hang on. Hang on a fucking second. You're kidding me. It doesn't fucking go anywhere. <laughs> Is that just melted away? We thought that was looping through. It's wet. Oh. And what's this? Oh, so it's just been one of those jobs, and it is. It's like one chop block. It is one chop block. Where's the rest of the cable? Fold it over. at the joining point of the cable, is The cable does look fucked going down there. Hit that test button again on that tester. It's still saying it's bad. Yeah. So it's not a loop through, it is a permy, so it's connected that is connected to our feed in, but there must be another the fucking junction somewhere. But you can see, well you can't see, but I'll get my camera on it. That. It does look. Join your pair. Looks fucked going through down there. That insulation's all knackered. I think uh, well, we got that out. Might be worth doing another bang test. Oh yeah, 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 fuck me, look at that go. Oh, what's gonna go with the bang? Okay, kill it! Before it kills me. That's in there. Shit. Well, shit. Bang, fucker. Let me get at it. So... I mean, is that back wall the same? I think it is, because that's wall, isn't it? There's a whole side to that wardrobe. I, I think you, you, it would have to be done from the bathroom. I think it would. I think we'd have to pull a tile out. Let's see what we got. We can't just do that off our own plans. No, no. That stud wall there. Oh, fuck me. Well, it's kind of in for a penny, in for a pound, isn't it? We'd better phone her up and see what she wants us to do. Fan hanging off. The fan was actually held on by double sided sticky tape. Those screw holes don't line up with the fan, so, oh, proper job. You saw on camera the fiery fireworks going on behind the stud work there. We're basically in a position where. Without permission, we can't really do anything else, and the lady's not answering yeah. her phone. We need to smash a large enough hole there, and we can't do that without. She's a gin and tonic to the good, I imagine. 
Oh, we'd love to smash that tile out. Smash through the stud work into the wall and try and, and hope that, you know, that gives us access to the cables because behind that stud work is brickwork. And if they've drilled through the brickwork and put some kind of wiring or junction next door where we're seeing those flashes coming from, we can get into it without removing a wardrobe. Without that fitted wardrobe coming out. It all depends on how much of this is on insurance and that sort of stuff. Uh, obviously it's a bigger job than we intended to look for today. It's already much later than anticipated. That was just a bastard to track down. Yeah. And this is the problem you get when you have unqualified fuck-up fitters who go leaving things like junction boxes scattered about in places where you don't expect to find them. Yeah and why it's good practice to always leave a junction behind a down light or behind somewhere where you can get back to it in the future. Make it accessible. That, for example, is just bad design. Yeah, that should have been... All of that probably. wiring could have been behind a down light where if you needed to get to it, you could do so. So, matey fucking numb nuts sticking it in the wall like that. What an asshole. But it's, that was, we had to, we, the whole circuit is off, it's decommissioned, it's taken, it's dis disconnected the boards. They've still got no lights down here, which is what they were hoping we would be able to fix today. But there's no way we can leave this operating because we know it's not the lights in the bathroom, but the feed into the bathroom is bad. And that feed in comes from the bedroom next door somewhere, but we don't know where. And um, we really are gonna have to put holes in the place to find it, to isolate it to repair it, to do whatever we need to do with it. So uh, let's get out of here, move on to the next job. And if we get permission to come back and further disassemble this, we shall do so and get some footage of what those fireworks were behind the vault. Yeah, definitely. I expect it to be black and crispy. Oh, mm -hmm. very nice. Right. Like Sunday dinner. <laughs> let's get the stuff and Bugger off. Homeowner has okayed us removing some tiling. Uh, Nudge a bit nervous about it. it, seems to have lost a bit of hair since, uh, <laughs> since just a couple of minutes ago when we were looking at this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, obviously you've got all these safety gear on there, haven't you, Nudge? Is it going to be that phase, do you think? I don't know. It's it's going through that way, so I think opening this would allow us to see. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. It's about how far down it comes. Is it this one or this one? See if you can make yourself look more like a goggle-eyed prick than you normally do. <laughs> yeah, that's that. So that's our wooden baton there. The fault's behind that somewhere, isn't it? But I think we're going to, have to take some side tiling off as well, which is just goes to show, doesn't it? When you get fitters and building in, it's all very well them doing a nice finish on the shiny stuff, but if they've balked the stuff that's behind, <laughs> then people like us are going to have to come and smash it all out again. Can, can you see me old, David? Oh, I tell you what I can see. I don't know why this can come on camera. You can see that as well, can't you, Nigel? Ooh, that looks, looks wet. Rank. Let's see if we can show up a little bit viewers what's in there. Something certainly wet and grotty looking in there. I reckon... So if I start on this one... Yeah, I don't know if that's a junction box or just a perished cable or... Is it, does it feel wet? Oh, this... This plaster board is a bit wet at the back. It's in paper. Yeah, but in, inside the hole, is it wet in there? You're fingering a wet hole or a dry gyna? <laughs> yes, that's the kind of muck you would expect from a wet hole. Ready? Don't look at it. Oh, 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 yeah. I thought that might be better than breaking the one next to it as well. I think if the good lady of the house is still here when you've got that off, it might be worth us 
just re-energising that so she can see the fireworks. That's not something we would normally do. But I do worry, you know, that when we're smashing away someone's bathroom like this, I don't want them thinking that we're doing it for no good reason. So if you know, if we can open the wall and say, well, look, look at the fireworks I mean, going on here. This is going through. It's just a fight, isn't it? So easy. This is something wet. Is it? It's just falling through. You can see if it's not, it's not dry. So this, this flood water then, that really came down in this cavity, didn't it? Yeah. Cavity, Mr. Marsh. What is that? Is that? That's a pipe going out there, isn't it? That's the fan cable. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. What's this? I don't know. What is that? That's it. There, there you go. Look. Yeah, that's that cable. Okay. 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 Right, that's not our uh, feed cable, is it? Yeah. What's going on here? That doesn't feel. See, it's exposed. Sliced open. And there's a black something. Is that a line? It's blackened in there, yeah. Okay, strip that back to past that point. Okay, let me just clean up because I don't want to walk around and scratch the bath in here. Oh, yeah. You've got previous for damaging baths, haven't you? Oh, yeah. No, I stood on the side of someone's bath and broke it on a new bath. It was much heavier there. And of course, insurance being useless as it is, they were like, oh no, your excess is far too high to. Well, I need to get out. For us to actually pay for it. So you'll have to pay for it yourself. <laughs> Cheers. I actually wonder why you bother with insurance. There you go, we've stripped the cable back and that is all charred inside. It's all wet inside. It's even burnt through the CPC, which has just fallen off. But presuming that is the fault, and there isn't anything else to see in there, we need to figure out. We should now be able to buy our test and get a decent fault. number. Yeah. Not that that's fixed, of course, but we've pulled it back from the point of failure. So uh, let's see. There's only one failure point left in this room, and it ain't wiring anymore. Lie neutral to earth. Now we had a resistive fault, didn't we, originally? Yes. This tester will tell us if there's any uh, resistance detected below 50 kilo ohms. Oh. Lovely. That's my kind of number, 75 mega ohms at 525 volts. That ain't going to trip shit. No. Lots of earth, anyway. So, that wet cable was our wet willy in this case. Do something a little naughty here because we've reconnected the circuit. And made it live with all this gubbins hanging out. And the reason for that is just because I'm trying to figure out what the feck is going where. It's just easier to do it cautiously while live, which obviously goes against everything that college says you should be doing but uh, it would be good when you're just dealing with a mess here aren't you you're just dealing with a bloody mess so in our junction box here we've got 230 there we've got 230 there I'd say 230 240 uh, so that's obviously a neutral which as you would expect Nigel could you turn the lights off please Right, we've lost the 230 there, so that's, uh, if you've been able to turn that back on please Nigel. So we've got switch line top, neutral, permi life bottom. And then over here, that's our fan. Back on. So the fan's coming off the switch live, no surprises there. And our damaged cable, is a permi live going nowhere because that cable was just there and going nowhere uh, so there must be another junction somewhere something we haven't seen thing is that's going sideways into this wall isn't it it's yes our faulty cable is going this way there must be another junction somewhere 
because our permanent live here is obviously going to the permanent line back in the bedroom somewhere where we haven't seen and then somehow spurring off that is this permanent line so there's some kind of t-junction going on somewhere that we haven't seen ideally we'd like to find that so that we can disconnect that where can it be <laughs> well, i think the thing is the owner is saying that they're going to have the bathroom redone. Well, I haven't got much choice really because of two problems. First of all, some idiots just made a right fucking mess of this wall. But also, it's all damp behind there, so they need to really take this out and check their tanking's okay because it's otherwise they're setting themselves up for a world of pain, really, aren't they? So, if um, we mitigate the problem for now. Yes, so we're just going to have to obviously, we can disconnect the fan from the junction. But this permi live here appears to not be going back to that junction because we did some dead testing on that some continuity testing and it's it's not going back there so it's going back somewhere else and until you start knocking the fucking walls down you can't tell for sure can you but this is the their only bathroom so it's not like they can revamp this and go and have a shit in the ensuite because there ain't one so it's a bit of a shit sandwich, isn't it, Mr. Marsh? And we can see our numbers are up, our IR. We'll get the get this powered back off. That duff cable will cut back to good, and then we'll stick it in something that'll just keep the water out of it for the moment until such time as the place can be worked upon. And that'll at least get the lights back on for now. Yeah. Right, let's do that then. Nigel is just belling out the fan. Can yes. you fan the bell end, Nigel? I have. It's this one. That's so that. that's our fan cable. Right, well, we'll disconnect that bad boy then. For the other cable, I've just got one of these off the van, which is a happy line, happy zero. That sounds a bit Chinesium, doesn't it? Oh, Raytech. Oh, they're a decent make. They make uh, IP gel products and stuff. I'm not sure where I got them from. Maybe from tool station or something. Oh. This is just the kind of job that we'd use something like this for. Because if I pop it open... Oh, hang on, let's put the camera down. There we go. No connectors in order to get some connectors, but what we've got here is a little well of gel. Let's get down to the light. You can see both halves are filled with a gel. Let's take a couple of little wiggy wagos on the end, mate. Just to keep those cores out of trouble. I won't bother with the CPC, nothing. None of it's going to do anything once it's in this little tank of jelly shite. Do we have to um, probably have to just take a little nick out there, don't we? And again, that's just to keep it out of trouble temporarily. Oh, a nice solution, eh, Nigel? Lovely. I'm going to stick... Uh, you see the gel sort of seeping out there, so it's nice mm -hmm. and tight on there. Stick 240 volts. 240 volts, motherfucker! <laughs> if anyone asks, it's, it's got maintenance free junction connectors on there, that's what I'll say. But we know better, don't we, viewers? Right, that fan's disconnected, so you can just coil that up. Mm -hmm. They did disconnect the right one, didn't you, Nigel? Uh, maybe. For fuck's sake. Shonke. Uh, obviously that's disconnected now, I don't need to worry about the end of that. So we'll just uh, shove that out of the way. This is a plastic pipe here. We did think, I don't think that was on camera when we were talking about that. We did think it was metal, it's actually plastic. I don't know what it is. 
It's got some tar or something on it, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like it's corroded, but it's not. It's just got a load of fucking horrible gunk on it. Don't know what it is. Obviously, it's going in the wall somewhere. There's a lounge above us, so it's not like it's a waste pipe from there. Uh, the bath's beneath us. This is the sink, so... I don't know what it is, but you go out front and it's all paved over at this height. Yeah. So there's nothing to see, it goes under the ground. Well, that was a fairly interesting thing, one to find, wasn't it, Nigel? It was a pain in the ass to find over. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who thought it was a good idea to run cables in an area that's going to be prone to damp in that kind of way. Um, it was always going to be difficult to get some power to the fan there but yeah beautiful but that's the first time you've cleaned the bath isn't it now <laughs> normally you leave it to the wife oh you can do yeah well she cleans it before she has her shower because i can see yeah you dirty it she cleans it yeah division of labor Oh, I'll wait till I have a bath. That usually cleans it. Mm -hmm. Well, we came, we saw, you made the right mess of this bathroom. Put the lights are back on. And that's about as good as it gets. Time to bug out. You bugger. That was fun. Yes. Yes. Uh, we love being in a basement, cutting out walls. I, I think we might get some some people just to just to get to stave off anybody moaning in the comments about going. Oh, <laughs> you were turning on live cables hanging out of walls and. Um, you kept on turning it on and making it go bang and that sort of stuff. The trouble with that job is I think we would kind of come to the limit of what we could find with dead testing. Yeah, I think it was very unpredictable wiring. I don't know who wired it. Well, I sus Illogical. I suspect it. Yeah. So wherever you s split it to test it, it you you just couldn't make head nor tail of where it was going or where it was coming from. The problem we had was at the source, at the meter said, you've got a fault mate, cheers, yeah we kind of know that. And at the bathroom when we dug that junction out the wall it said, you've got a fault coming into this room mate. And I'm like, mm, yeah okay, well we didn't know that at the start but we found that. Once we found that the fault was on the feed into the bathroom, you yeah. kind of scuppered them because ordinarily you would go to the, the previous room, which would be the bedroom I guess in this case, and start disassembling circuits yeah section by section at, at the pendants where you've got the junctions or at the switches where you've got the junctions but you've got a site like that where you haven't got any junctions at the switches and you haven't got any pendants it's all down lights and the guy who's fitted them has been a bit of a spoon and put them in the wall at yeah the top of the hidden wall. junctions where yeah. you don't know where to find them you, you're kind of fucked uh, and we don't like energising stuff that's live that's hanging out the no, walls. No, I don't energise a faulty circuit, do you? But if you're trying to figure out what's going where, sometimes it, rightly or wrongly, it's just easier to switch the power on and get your meter on there. And you, you kind of, yes, it is dangerous, yes, it is dodgy, yes, we probably ought not to be doing it, and don't do what we do, kids. This isn't a how-to video, remember, this is just a fucking vlog. This is how we happen to do it not how you ought to be doing it. Always remember that with our shit, and with anybody's shit on YouTube, for fuck's sake. Um, so that's why we did it. Um, we, we needed to localise where the fault was, and to do that we had to use senses that uh, we perhaps or, 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 or wouldn't ordinarily. No. Sight and sound in, 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 in that yeah. kind of way. Because uh, you're looking for a flash, you're looking for a bang, and no, it's not ideal to keep energising a circuit that's got a known fault on it. 
but when we were doing that the homeowner was out we were the only people in the place we can perhaps argue we're <laughs> competent enough to be pissing around with it live like that without killing ourselves and we seem to have survived that was a plus yeah yeah well, I've got, you know i've just got these occasional twitches these oh, days yeah right? yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's just working with you you need 230 volts just to get your cock hard don't you <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yes just to stave off any comments there, there, there wasn't much else we could do we couldn't really disassemble that circuit any further uh we had to know where that Thing was going bang and the only way to know that is to make it go bang because all we can all, all that we had was was dead test saying you're fucked mate yeah. um but to be fair once we found it once we found where it was obviously it became de-energized once we had a cl the clue we were looking for i don't know we, we, it was. we keep switching it back on again didn't we just get, get see some flashy things on the camera yeah, and stuff but, like yeah. that looks good yeah, well, anyway, well, you can like it or not, but it is what it is. It sounds like frying bacon. I love the sound of frying bacon. It did get a bit crispy. crispy. Yeah, yeah, okay. But once we found it, it was the end of an unused part of the live circuit. So. Yeah, yeah, it's weird because uh, there's obviously a feed out from the room before it. There's obviously a feed into the bathroom, and then they, you've got this T-junction cable, which I think, I, I, my suspicion is that it was put in for the fan, that it's put in as a Permi Live for the fan, yeah. and that at some point someone has disconnected it and left it just as a, a fan that comes on and off with the lights, because there's no other reason for that cable to be there, but instead of running it from a logical position, they've run it from fuck knows where, we don't know where, and until that bathroom gets ripped out, we won't know. But what can you do? Well, that's, a f that's in the future. I mean, it's made safe for now, so in the future we'll find out. And, uh, as safe as it can be for now. It's not ideal, is it? No. Um, there's still a live cable there in the wall and someone can get into it. They've got to do a bit of effort to get into it and then they've got to pull the Wago connectors off. So, you know, you can argue, oh, OK, well, it's safe enough. It's not like there's any kids in the place. It's an, a middle-aged couple who aren't about to start dicking around with these things. And we wrote 230 volts on it, then we 240 volts. Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Stop, stop fucking moaning at us for fuck's sake. Yeah. Fuck, fuck off. Fuck off. Go away. Fucking. Go away. Go on. Fuck off. We're pretty much there. Yeah. This is just nice to sign off. It's a camera. The fucking back. Fuck off. We told you off. Fuck off. Go fuck away. You bunch of bastards. You've got to be shitting me. What is the matter with you people? Nigel, get out of the bathroom, there's no end titles for goodness sake. Alright.